And all I have to do is begin massing up roaches that will be weaker, they won't have speed, but I will have more and I will have the concave and that'll let me get the gold. Yeah, I love it. That's a really good way for TLO to get back into this. And if Demaga risks it, and it looks like he is, he's going to... Oh, maybe... Oh, there he goes. All right. And, oh, I think TLO saw that. Yeah, he's moving back now. So he definitely saw that. We're looking at the intercept. But Demaga is bringing a lot of roaches along with this. And this is kind of where I worry. Will TLO be able to actually hold this gold? He can, yeah. I think. There's maybe enough, especially with reinforcements coming in. But there's 18 roaches on the map for Demaga. This force at the front is only 12, so it's going to be 9 versus 12 plus Zerglings. I think TLO does have a slight edge in this exchange. TLO's having to flood with more Lings, but Demaga's roach count is just a little teensy bit too much. Yep, Lings do not do a huge amount of damage to roaches, I'm afraid. And Demaga is now pushing forward once again with a 19 roach to 12 advantage. Again, they're not all with the army right now, so that's something to consider. But TLO's roaches are very heavily injured. If Demaga gets good target fire, he can make this work. Admittedly, TLO gets a good end of that exchange initially. However, now Demaga's starting to push that back. Well, with this sort of onslaught, Demaga's just saying, you went for the cheese early, I held it off. And this is your punishment. Yes, this is what you every, get for trying that. Every cheese play that doesn't go well, if there's a good player on the receiving end of it, you will be punished. That's there's it. a good game. Tying the series up one to one. A couple of pretty short Zerg versus Zerg to kick us off in this series, which does equalize the score and reset us to now a best of three. That leaves Demaga and Kass still available for the Ukraine. And then for Germany, you have, of course, the one and only Sokke, but you've also got Hero Marine. That said, I think you might even want to consider Sokke to go up against Demaga here. I don't know after the last time that yeah. Demaga just dismantled Hero Marine, whether or not that's a good idea. I think Sokke's maybe a better match. Yeah, I mean, Sokke is the sort of person who I think can really level Demaga. And I don't mean as in like the oh, he got leveled really hard, but as in, he, he does that mind game leveling where he goes, okay, I'm going to convince you that I'm going for one Oracle, surprise, here's three. Because Demaga is a very astute observer, he's very experienced, and Sake is particularly good at exploiting exactly that kind of player. I think you might be right there. Hero Marine, on the other hand, like, pretty much a mechanical genius right now, but he can be beaten, as we've seen before. But even then... What happens? I mean, I think the ideal situation for Germany is that Sokke carries it all the way through. I'm not 100% convinced that Hero Marine can take out Kass in a TVT. So that's what worries me a little bit. But that said, we, again, have seen very great mechanical play there from Hero Marine. So I think that would be mm -hmm. a more balanced matchup. But Kass's experience, I think, might win out there. So this is still really close, one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, this is what made it such a fun series to watch in the previous Group B action. There's just so much talent in both lineups. I mean, there's no weak link in any way. All the players have very distinct styles. They're all fun to watch. Demaga just really well-rounded with some insane plays. Same with TLO. We got the greatness of Koss, the sledgehammerist of sledgehammers. I mean, I really can't wait to see who gets sent out. Probably going to be Sokka, who is more than happy to do creative plays in a very sort of calm, controlled way. Yeah, I think you might be right. Let's find out. The lobby is up, so I'll let's see who's coming out next. Oh, maybe I. I hope I get invited to the lobby soon. There it is. Here it comes. Well, so I far it's a supply versus a caster, so we don't know yet. All right. Good Hang luck, hysteria. Yeah, which is interesting because neither of those are eligible to play. Hero Marine coming out right here. All right. Well. That would be a bit weird because Hero Marine is also on Germany. So Germany taking out Germany. <laughs> there we go. Well, TLO has been removed by the lobby host. He's like, I want to stay. Nope. You're out. Hero Marine versus Demaga. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if this goes better than last time for Hero Marine. I mean, it could. It very well could. Hero Marine is a fantastic player. We shouldn't underestimate him. And this is a particularly interesting map, given what we've seen out of Hero Marine. Demaga won on a map with lots of space. We've seen that Demaga's ability to shove momentum into his late game is exceptional. 
almost got to that point after falling behind against Happy. Definitely got to that point the first time that, uh, that Demaga played Hero Marine. But here on Derelict Watcher, much, much closer. Guaranteed to be 3 base versus 3.5 base, I would call it. Mm. That's good. That's always fun. Hoping for a really good game here with Hero Mar he I hate that name because it's really hard to say. I, I, I almost say Hero Marine, which is not really, really right. Hero Marine? Yeah. I mean, I do that American slur where I just call yeah. him Hair Marine. It's like Hair Marine, yes. Hair Marine. A lot of people Hair just Marine. call him Mouse Marine, which I think is a much easier way of doing it, but that's not actually his name. So, as a caster, I feel I should probably get it right. Oh dear. Hmm. This is going to be. This will be a challenge, as it always is whenever we cast him, for me to not screw up that name, especially with a bit of the sniffles, but never mind. You got it. I believe in you, John. I'm glad you do. I don't. I never have. That's rather dark and depressing, isn't it? I know. Jeez, wow. <laughs> Jeez. That's so sad. I mean, God. you're really opening up to me in Man, this cast. I've been casting for three, three days. I'm already like, oh, ugh. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm just like losing control of my life here. It's, it's a bit grim. We're, we're just w now waiting for the people to leave the lobby because we don't have enough spectator slots at this point because half the team is demanding that they stay in. So th this is a wonderful delay. All right, Bly got kicked out. Screw you, Bly. And that brings in the actual caster who we, you know, need. So there we go. Good. Looks like we should be able to begin. I hope. Actually, no, we, we do have food. Good luck. I was a bit... Oh. I was a bit concerned we're missing Tude. We're not. We're ready to go. Alright. Countdown has now begun. Derelict Watcher will be the venue for the next encounter here. Hmm. Now, can a Hero Marine pull off a better performance versus last time where that did not work out well for him for Damaga? It's like, Damaga's experience just shone through there. And it's like, no. You know, sit back down. I'm almost twice your age. I could, in some strange situation, have been your father. So I am going to show you exactly how this is done. Well, it's time to see. Yes, it is. If the young German hero marine, hammer, hammer, marine, hammer, hammer, can take on the ancient Ukrainian. I heard Demaga. he lives in a hut mm. atop a mountain. Young StarCraft players make the treacherous, perilous trek to get advice from this wise old wizened sage. No, he's like 27. Guys, don't... Don't listen to me. He lives in a deep cavern. <laughs> hidden beneath bats. Where underground lakes... You know, I have like... Filled with bears. With, filled with bears. <laughs> and there's the... There's the canoe bearer who's like a skeleton who, who who will gently row you across the lake of bears to see Demaga's house right next to Beowulf's. Indeed, that's exactly how it is. That's a fact you can't possibly dispute. Regardless, there's actually nine years between these guys. Demaga, I... Oh, is it actually more than that? I think Demaga's 27, Hero Marine is 16, so that's actually 11 years between them. Jeez. That's... And I'm older than both. God damn it. Uh, 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 uh. <sighs> People say age before beauty. I've certainly got that coming going for me. Anyway, to the northeast position of the Red Trunks for the Ukraine. Playing Zerg, it is Demaga. A versus his opponent to the southwest position. The young buck, who has already gone 5-1 in the nation wars. Not to be messed with. Actually, now 5-2. Ooh. Is it five Wait, two? really? Yeah. What, is it should it? be 5-1. Is it 5-1? Hang on. I think mean, it's 5-1? Yeah. Oh, no, wait. No, no, no 5-2. Yeah, it must oh. be. He's in the losers match. He's got to have gone 5-2. Oh, two. God. I'm, I'm so embarrassed. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're correct. That's that's the truth. Regardless, to the uh, southwest position in the Blue Trunks playing Terran, it is a Mouse Sports Hero Marine. I'm trying to remember who else he lost to. He lost to Demaga? For sure. They just played... Dude, he lost to Snoot. Norway. Yeah, he lost to Snoot. Oh, he yeah. lost to Snoot. He got snooted. That's He right. did, yes. There we go. I had neglected to remember 
exactly who else he got killed by, and which is a momentous event, honestly. Uh, seeing Hero Marine actually lose in this particular Nation Wars tournament is unusual. He had a five, was it five zero record? Yeah, he had a five zero record before going five one, of course. That's the way things tend to go. Uh, you know, he won five games in a row, which was kind of ridiculous, including an all kill. But just as a win streak makes you want to win more and allows you to win more, a losing streak tends to cause you to lose more too. And this mm. is two losses in a row that Hero Marines had yes. in really key matches. Yeah, that's very true. He did kind of let his team down in matches that you wouldn't necessarily have expected. Admittedly, Snoot coming out for Norway is a very strong opener regardless, even if Snoot himself is claiming that he's not really performing up to his usual standards. Evidently, he's doing pretty well here, so it's hard to argue with his experience. Yeah, Snoot's really amazing. Like, really, really amazing. Just as amazing as a player as Demaga is, and vice versa. We're seeing here, Marine. Get that one Marine out to repel the Overlord. Interestingly, going Reaper, Reaper, Marine, instead of just Reaper, Reaper, add-on. So he is, he is powering a little bit harder. We see a second refinery which generally indicates a, a yearning to go for uh, a pretty swift, uh, not a spire, star, uh, not a stargate, a starport. Gosh, went through literally every wrong race in one. He's building <laughs> a fleet beacon. We'll never see this coming. <laughs> Hero Marine pulls back here. He's done a decent amount of damage to this queen. He'd love to keep harassing her, but Demag is going with his pretty straight up four queen into later gas here even going to the point of supply blocking himself to get to it but it's okay he can build more buildings There's more overlords on the way anyway so that really doesn't make that much of a difference hero marines control also very very good here but killing queens with reapers takes a little bit of work these days tis a true thing hmm. hellion banshee is going to be the control play we're going to see out of hero marine but Demaga's pretty cautious against that sort of play. He's already constructing a fifth queen. He mm. wants to make sure, of course, that he has enough creep spread on a huge map like this, but also wants to deal with this varied defense of a lot of units that don't deal much damage. Whoa, a queen fell. Whoa, whoa. Mm. I think that, that might have ended up happening regardless, but I think Demaga was a little slow pulling. His queen's going to lose a second wait, queen here. Wait. This is not... Really? Is this Hang on, is this Demaga playing, or is it his old grandmother? <laughs> I have I to mean, ask, because Demaga, that... Demaga doesn't li let you... Demaga just lose queens like that? I mean, that seems like a very absent-minded play. I mean, Demaga is... Just, he's gonna... He's gonna Four get queens killed die. by just... What? What's happening? What the what hell? Is happening? This, this isn't supposed to do this, but I mean, Hero Marine just goes in. I mean, Hero Marine's control has been phenomenal, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, Demaga really let that one go, and uh, these these Hellions are not even supposed to get into the natural, much less kill the whole drone line and four queens, and get out with half your units, and head into the main, and the Reapers are still alive, and what on earth is happening? I, I, I don't even understand. This should not be the case. And now we have the Marines moving forward to pick off the Overlords. I mean, this is just a, a shocking meltdown from Demaga. A fifth and queen a dies. Fantastic follow-up from Hero Marine. What the heck? This, this makes... Uh, theoretically, none of this should be happening in any way. This is what you have to understand. Hero Marine's control, sixth queen dies, has been ridiculous. And Demaga making some fairly large errors in terms of his actual defense. And he is getting punished for it. He is getting hurt badly. He has lost a ton of queens. He has lost all of his production. He has no queens on the field at all. So his lava production is completely gone. He has no anti-air. This Banshee is now going to have an absolute field day. The Hellions are still alive. The Reapers finally die. A god. This, this is brutality coming out of Hero Marine. And a really surprising lapse from wow. Demaga. And Hero Marine is doing a brilliant follow-up as well. Building four barracks at a very odd time because he smells blood in the water. He knows that Demaga's going to have to play the catch-up game should this attack ever cease. And that is when he's going to be winning, is with a huge follow-up Marine push. Man, I cannot wait to see the units lost tab after this finally ends. This Banshee, by the way, is not going to die because there's actually no anti-air. So this Banshee is on 15 kills, 16 kills now. Here's what it looks like. Just look at how ridiculous this is. 54 lings and 8 queens die to 3 marines 
now 15 Hellions and two Reapers. And of course, 32 I mean, drones going down as well. I mean, 15 Hellions is a real indicator of how Hero Marine was able to continue to apply so much pressure. Yeah, he, he kept just bringing kept them adding on more and more and more Hellions the instant he saw that the Queen line was starting to crumble. And now he has Marines getting produced nine at a time. He can begin to add Medivacs. Well, it's this 32 a... supply to 82, which at this stage in the game is deferred. 99% of games just game over completely. The Banshees are still working on it. Just, that's it. GG. A massacre. Completely one-sided. Well, so much for my prediction that Damago would be able to stand up to Hero Marine. Not against that build. But to be fair, how different a build was that from your standard sort of Reaper Hellion pressure? Not really different. I mean, I want I, I want to watch that game again. I'm actually going to open up the replay yeah, while the next match is getting set up because yeah. something went wrong. Horrible you know, wrong. I, I, I almost imagine that. I mean, most players live by the uh, well. Nowadays, most players live by the mode of I'm not trying to deal damage. I'm trying to not take damage. These Hellions are really important to stay alive because. I need to have control against Zerglings. And if I don't have that control against Zerglings, goodness, I am doomed. So I'll be very careful against the Queens. But I think Hero Marine knows that Damaga likes these Queen heavy plays. So what is he going to do? He's just going to apply pressure. He's just going to <laughs> continue to poke and continue to deal damage. And he's going to know that Zergling speed is heavily delayed, that there's really no Zerglings around the corner, and that he can just keep out adding on Hellions. And on a big, wide-open map, like Derelict Watcher, you kind of need to keep your queens out in the open. Wow, I mean, really, the, the the first two Hellions did a very good job of weakening the first queen. I'm looking at it right now. Went forward, brought that queen down to 57 health. So the two queens at the front have 175 full health, and then 50. And then all of a sudden, he just lets the Reapers heal again, moves in. Gosh, he keeps moving in with the Reapers. To deal just little bits of damage. Yeah, and that turns out to be key. I'm actually watching it on the... Because obviously the stream's on the broadcast delay. I'm actually getting to see that very moment now. And look at how low health that queen actually is. And then this push comes in with the Hellions. It's not that many, but it's enough to take one queen out. And then... And the, actually, look, those two queens are actually way out of position to the right there. So yeah. it doesn't really wow. make that much of a difference. But they, they're out of position. They now move into position for the defense. And then I think two more Hellions come up as a follow-up here. And in comes the aggression. And Damaga, does Damaga pull a third queen immediately upon seeing this? I mean, he doesn't pull the third queen. I think that's his downfall. He, he continues to try to rely on low queen numbers. And more and more Hellions stack in. And I mean, that's just one of those losses that really makes you reconsider what you're doing with your queen energy. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to throw down, you know, seven, eight creep tumors early. Maybe what I should be doing is saving for transfuse. Hmm. Well, that went horribly wrong for Demaga. Really, really wrong. Shockingly so, because that is not... It's more of a compliment to Demaga's usual skill to say, you know, this isn't Demaga playing. Because, like, 99% of the time, Demaga would be able to hold that easily. You know, he would never, ever take so much damage from such a push. But Hero Marine executed it so well, and... It just made Demaga look like a bit of a chump there, which is not what you usually expect from him. What's cool is that we're seeing a lot of plays that are exploiting all the little assumptions that we've all become accustomed to. Okay, well, I'm going to build a Zealot, and then I'm going to cancel it before uh, it finishes so I can build a Nexus as fast as possible. Why do I do that? Because I would have seen his attack already. And then we see twice now. TLO just waits and then moves in with a 10 pool dealing crushing damage. And then we also see the same thing with uh, in that game with Titan and Bly, where Bly just rushes for the speed and crushes through because there's no first zealot. Same thing here, Hero Marine. Well, you're supposed to run away from queens. You're supposed to just prevent creep spread. He just goes and kills the queen with the two reapers, relying on the healing ability of the reaper. Absolutely clever beyond belief um the plays we're seeing throughout the nation war yeah really smart and the hero marine will go forward here to fight of course against cast the last man standing for the ukraine we did just have what looked like a a failed map there so we're going to try and re-host that we'll be on it momentarily it's actually gonna be an altazim so cast taking the big map again here in a tbt 
This could take a while. I am excited. I mean, I hope we get to see something as equally epic as the Daishi Kass game. That would be amazing. Super slick, super sick. It would be awesome. Well, I hopefully, hopefully we will. I would. I want to know if Hero Marine can handle TVT against Kass on a map of this size. That is an interesting notion. Can he do I mean, that? I would imagine the answer is yes, given that he has just shown incredible versatility as Terran. He he is just. He has been the man. He has. Very much so. This map, though, anything can happen. We've seen some weird stuff on this map already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rehosting so the game. Sorry, sorry about the little delay, folks. And unfortunately, we have to wait for the game to be rehosted and get all of the casters back in. There's at least four languages going here, possibly five, so that's something to bear in mind. Takes a little bit of time to rehost if we happen to run out. Okay, here we go. Looks like everyone's ready to rock and roll. We filled up all the spectator slots, so we have not run out of that. We don't have to kick people out and negotiate and play musical chairs. That's good. Okay, cool. Countdown has now begun for the second time here on Altusum Stronghold. Hero Marine versus Empire Cast. Empire Cast, the last man standing for the Ukraine. Hero Marine fighting for the honor of Germany, attempting to take third place before Russia takes on at Norway in the grand final. It's going to be a very tough battle for Koss. Hero Marine has looked amazing. Sokka is up next, but I do think that this is the hardest match for Empire Koss. He's got to be very particular about his positioning. Many players are not used to the amount of dead space on this map. You just don't have vision control. Some of the biggest errors we see are players just missing uh, attack movements. Hmm. Yeah, something along those lines. All right. Here we go, Altism Stronghold. This is it. Can Kass bring this back here for the Ukraine? Or will Hero Marine take yet another win and finish with a 7-2 record? Insanity. It's really crazy, crazy record for the Nation War. In particular, where we've seen a huge amount of back and forth. We've seen pretty much everything going to Game 5 almost all the time. Really long series, not that many whitewashers. Very... Oh, Kass! Kass, what are you doing? Oh, never mind. I just thought, oh, hang on a minute. I mean, he's going out very early with that scout, but I saw two SCVs going out there and I instantly thought, what Oh, the? yes. Yeah. This, is, this is still going to be likely a center map proxy. Yeah. There's a number of choices he can make. He can go uh, barracks and center, gas, and then second barracks and center. I like that play a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You're just leveraging the Ripa. This is a nice little meta play. Every game in this tournament's been so cool. Hmm. Builds it right on top of the Nation Wars logo. So we're now watching the Aten <laughs> There's sounds... the gas. It is going to be Reaper. Let's see if his next one is rallied out. It is. He's rallying the next one outwards. So he's going to be trying to get an early scout. I really love a two barracks Reaper harass. It's super fun to control. Has a really high win percentage against people who go for the CC first. Which is exactly what Hero Marine is doing because it's Altazim. Why would you not do something like that? So this is a nice little cute play by Cast that could end up being devastating. Oh yeah, I mean, especially if he does get that second barracks, is he just going to stick with one? Okay, so it's a slightly more economic variant where okay. Cast is almost half claiming right now. I do want to go mech because you know what? I have my barracks in the middle of the map, so <laughs> I think we're going to see Koss just uh, apply a lot of pressure, take and expand probably two command centers, and then just mass factory it up. All right, let's see if that happens. Barracks is on the way, and of course, Cast would love to try and delay that if at all possible. The Reaper is going to come out and be a real pain here. He I, He's not going to be able to stop the barracks from going up by the looks of it, not from that position. Altism is too large to really make that happen, but he is going to be incredibly annoying with this, and there's a second Reaper to follow oh. up here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hero bunker. Marine only just now sees the bunker. Ooh. He's gonna go and try and stop it, but it's gonna be too late. He won't be able to stop that construction. The Marine is on the way, and the Reaper will be able to take out that SCV no problem whatsoever. Now things are getting really interesting. A counter bunker by Hero Marine coming into the main mineral line. A second Reaper out on the way. First Marine's about to pop. Can Hero Marine stop that bunker from going up? Oh, I think he might be able to, you know. Oh, it's gonna be really, really close. He target fires oh. on the Reaper instead. The bunker is now up. 
Oh my god, and he picks off the Marine. The bunker is up. Three SCVs from Koss are in line. Bunker from here, Marine is done. Bunker from Koss is done. Koss is still just adding on more SCVs. Not adding on more Reapers, though. Might be a little bit distracted in this moment, or just wants to get up his command center. This isn't huge damage right now being dealt, but it is huge pressure. Yep, and he's going to be able to stop a lot of stuff from going down here. He almost delayed the factory there. He's taking down loads more SCVs, and this is going to be very, very difficult for Hero Marine to deal with, unless he can somehow get a surround on those Reapers, which is going to be pretty hard. I mean, Cass's control might not be the best in the world, but it's still damn good. Another Marine is picked off very easily there by that Reaper, and Cass manages to make a good full ring around the Rosie, killing seven workers already, and is now going to kill off this Marine as well. Jeez, this is some pretty cool Reaper action coming out here from Carson. It's fairly effective as well. He's going to send those right back into the bunker so they're nice and safe. And the mining time loss from Hero Marine is so important here. I mean, just flatly, Hero Marine doesn't have the second orbital command, so he can't really catch up in any sort of mulage. He's behind in every fashion. This is a virtually guaranteed win. It's going to bring the series to 3 or to 2-2. It's looking likely. Another Reaper does go down, actually, so Cass making a little bit of a misstep there as he heads back to his bunker, but you are right. It's going to be extremely hard to come back from this position. Cass, of course, with the later command center, but it really doesn't matter because Hero Marine hasn't been able to mine from his anyway, so he might as well not have had it, and he's had most of his SCVs off the mineral line. So I like the play from Cass. He's going to just throw down very fast Banshee. This will allow him to buy a lot of time, and I think that any, almost any play cost does now is going to be a good one, but he kind of needs to start spending that money quickly. A, a switch to factories, doing a lot, a heavy Hellion might seem weird, but I think that given this position, how broken Marines, or Hero Marines front is, it is an option. Ooh, he actually allowed Hero Marine in. He wanted to kill the SCV, of course, but he did allow a full scout, which may be not the best of ideas. Hero Marine is happy just to lose that SCV there. And now he's going to hop over. The Banshee's on the way. But the question, I suppose, is can anything be done? The bunker's still up. Because there's really nothing here that Hero Marine can use to kill it. Not yet. He's going to need a lot of units to break that down. A 9 SCV, a 10 SCV advantage here for Kars as well. Oh, lovely shot by Hero Marine. Just <laughs> as that Reaper jumps back in. And that has actually allowed Hero Marine to, I think, break his bunker at this point. He's salvaged his own. He should be able to take that out now without too much of a problem. Starting to see factories begin to get massed by Koss, who is not forgetting the importance of SCV production, getting himself the third command center, now sending forth the Banshee. Hero Marine, though, is prepared for a Banshee smartly mm -hmm. by already having a second orbital, taking straight to the Viking. Koss taking a little bit of damage to the front, but no big deal. Already has his mech getting started. Koss's big goal at this point is to start Blue Flame Research and then to out Hellion, his enemy. And he has the economy to make that happen. He is definitely ahead in pretty much every aspect. Got more production, more cash, more tech. Things are looking pretty good for him there. Cass is also going for Infernal Pre-Igniter, of course. If he gets into a Hellion War, he will want that. And he's going to start the Hellion War off right now with a great set of shots, actually, off on those Red Flame Hellions of Hero Marine. Drives them away, no problem at all. Gets a good lineup. They're heavily damaged. They won't be able to engage here. And now Cass moving out. And we should, of course, point out that Hero Marine is not walled off. Yeah, and that bunker has just been amazing for that. The bunker also sees that the gas geyser at the south isn't down. So this is making Koss increasingly confident that he is ahead. Oh my god, he literally is walking up and he's just picking off yeah. all these Marines. Hero Marine didn't move. He, he, he couldn't do a thing there. He didn't even try to reposition. I don't think he could have. The Banshee now comes in. Well, that's a weird situation. You don't usually see a Banshee attacking a Viking, but in that situation, it's, <laughs> this is a weird game and has been a weird game and a great series up to this point. Cast now making his way into the natural mineral line, being chased by Vikings, which is just embarrassing for the Vikings, really. Oh, those poor Vikings, the poor SCVs, all getting roasted apart. Mine from Hero Marine being placed at the far back side. Hero Marine can't quite decide what it is he wants to do. And we see Koss knowing precisely how he wants to roll. Blue Flame's done. Again, weird map to mass up Blue Flame Hellions on. But as we can see, Hero Marine has no front. Well, he's finally going to be able to build a wall of some description. He got, he got a tank out. But let's be honest, Koss is already on three orbital commands mining. 
a second set of Hellions, all with blue flame, 11 of them in total. The tank is not enough to hold that. The Reaper takes the initial shots, and then the Marines conveniently line up and get destroyed.